Babu's Game Room. All right, hello guys. It is just Chris again. I am back, and I am going into the Safari Zone to catch my Tauros and to talk about Korean food. So hopefully, I can remember how to get there while I am distracted by talking. I probably can't remember even if I wasn't talking, so no big deal. So Korean food, some of my favorite kimbap, which if you are familiar with the in Japan, they're known as onigiri, and in America, they're known as Donuts. If you watched the four kids dub of Pokemon, <laughs> these are it's it's rice, a little rice ball or rice triangle. Triangle is a popular way to eat it in Korea. Samgak kimbap. Rice. You got your rice and you got stuff inside and it's wrapped in seaweed, which I really like. They're super cheap. You can buy them from the convenience store for the equivalent of like less than a dollar, and they're great snacks. In Korea, compared to Japan, they've got often a lot more spicy foods inside of them. But you know, you've got your standard tuna and mayo. Um, they've got mostly tuna, combinations of tuna, as they're like non-spicy ones. You've got your bulgogi ones that you can get. This is the wrong way. And you've got in Korea, you've got all of your spicy ones. You've got like dak galbi filled ones. You've got like just spicy this or that meat inside of. Some got kimbap, and I'm making myself hungry right now. So I guess I shouldn't talk about food too much. But I'll go over some of my other highlights. If you're not familiar with Korean food, and this is the wrong area, isn't it? If you're not familiar with Korean food, uh, the standards are bulgogi, kimchi. Oh wait, this is this is where I'm supposed to be. Okay, bulgogi, kimchi. Kimchi is kind of a, an acquired taste. It's really hard to describe what it is, but it's veggies, typically cabbage. And it's very salty and a little bit sour, and it's uh, spicy. So I didn't like it at first, and I guess what kind of got me into eating kimchi was eating it up a little bit. It's typically eaten cold as a side dish, and it's a very standard side dish in Korean restaurants. So even if you go to a Korean place, Korean barbecue place especially, that's probably the best place to try kimchi if you're a little bit hesitant on it. Uh, I like to heat it up, just put it on the grill like you would with your Korean barbecue meats, and that's a good way of easing yourself into the taste. Because yes, Toros, okay, because it's very, it's a very foreign taste, especially if it's, if it's one of the sour, sour ones, very foreign to, ah, to the Western palate, I think. Uh, usually spicy, sorry, uh, sour. Usually sour isn't something that, y you know, is part of a standard meal in the West, or at least in North America. Which is where I'm from, of course. Will this catch me Pokemon? Ah, uh, no. Okay. So, as I was saying, try it, heat it up first, if, if you're a little bit hesitant to try it. And you might like it that way. I liked it that way. Now I like it cold. As long as it's not too sour, everybody's got their own recipe and their own tastes. Some people like really sour kimchi. Some people like really salty kimchi. I like spicy kimchi, salty, sour not as much. So th that's probably like the number one food that people think of when they think of Korea is kimchi. Bulgogi, if you don't know, is beef, typically beef. Literally means bul is bul is fire. Gogi is meat, so fire meat, typically beef. And it's in kind of some kind of sauce or something, marinated for a long time. And I haven't researched it, I just know that it's good. Probably the, if, if you're curious about Korean food, bulgogi is the number one food that you should try. It's not spicy typically, or not very spicy. I would say it's not spicy at all. It's almost a little bit sweet and uh, definitely very savory. I like it. Most people like it. Eat bulgogi if you haven't tried any Korean food ever. Eat bulgogi. The second food that you should try if you are, you know, curious about Korean food but you haven't tried anything at all is bibimbap, which is it's just Korean fried rice basically. But what makes it different is that you know you've got your rice and then on top you've got a whole bunch of different veggies. Ooh, Kangaskhan. Well, I'll throw some pokeballs at it in case I can get an extra one. That would be nice. And probably won't, but anyways. Oh yeah, it ran away, okay. Come on, Tauros, come on, you're so far away. I use up all my steps, oh yeah, I definitely use up all my steps. Okay, maybe I'll do a, a one plus one today. And one plus one is a Korean thing. One plus one is just Korean, buy one, get one free. But they call it one plus one in English, like it's one plus one, they say one plus one. If you say that in Korea, they, they're like, oh yeah, one plus one, yeah, 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 I know what that means, I understand that. And yeah, so I'm doing a one plus one right now. Anyways, bibimbap, you got your rice, you've got your, your different veggies, usually tons of different veggies, bibimbap is very colorful. 
which I, I like. I, th I think food that looks fun makes it more fun to eat, and that's bibimbap for me. Anyways, you got your veggies and you've got your meat. Typically, there is rice. Uh, not rice. <laughs> Typically, there is an egg on top, a fried egg, sunny side up. Kangas Khan again. Wow, that is really lucky. I wow, I think this is... A 1 in 1,000 chance of, ca of encountering two Kangaskhans in a row in this area. I think it's a 1% chance. 1 in 100 times 1 in 100. Is that 1 in... 1 in 10,000? That's insane. Okay. Yep, didn't catch it. That's okay. That's cool. I'm, I'm just happy to, s to have seen that Kangaskhan. Just like I was happy to see that first chancy. <laughs> Anyways, I want that Taurus to come out here. Wish I was playing yellow with its high Tauros encounter rate. But I'm not, I'm playing red. And I'm gonna catch as many Pokemon as I can legitimately in red. So anyways, back to Korean food. Bibimbap, you've got your fried egg on top. It is sunny side up. And it's typically served, at least in Korean restaurants in the West, in a stone bowl. And that is known as dosot or dosot. I, I think dosot bibimbap. Forgive my Korean pronunciation. It's... It doesn't always work when you convert it to English, and I actually only know the uh, the English <laughs> English spelling of that because I guess that's how I learned it first, and that's how I remember it now. Oops. Anyways, it's served in a stone bowl, which is super super hot, and it's meant to keep the food hot for as long as possible, and also to continue cooking the food a little bit longer. And the result is that the the rice at the very bottom starts to get a little bit crunchy, which I like because it mixes up the texture inside the bowl. If you don't like that, you got to keep stirring it constantly as you're eating. And that's the fun part of bibimbap. It's kind of like a make-it-yourself dish. Basically, all of the ingredients that I said are just plopped on top of one another, on top of that big bowl of rice inside your stone bowl. And you're supposed to, you know, break the egg yolk open, cut it, and like mix it up. And... As well inside, there's like the bibimbap sauce and also like sesame seeds and a red spicy sauce, which is optional if you don't like spicy food. And you just you just mix that all up and then you, you mix it up as much as you as you like. It's up to your preference. And I like those kind of foods that are, you know, do-it-yourself foods, you know, where you contribute to your final eating experience before actually eating it or during eating it. And I, I, I like that kind of stuff. So I really like bibimbap. That and bulgogi are, you know, the top two like starter foods for, you know, people who are interested in trying Korean food. It's also the two foods that you have probably most likely tried. And the third is kimbap. Not samgak kimbap this time, but kimbap. These are the rolls, which are kind of like beginner sushi. So, oh, it's through a safari ball at a doduo. Okay, I don't want a doduo. I don't want a do- Okay, thank you. Okay, so this is like starter sushi. If you're really not big on the whole raw fish thing, but you're curious- Yes, a toros, okay. Come on, stay in the ball this time, please. If you're curious about trying sushi, you know, the whole, like, rice and things and it's wrapped in seaweed, then if you're curious about trying that, try kimbap first, because it foregoes the whole raw fish thing. And you can get kimbap with meat inside, you can get it that's just veggies, and all kinds of different flavors. And it gives you that sushi experience without giving you the raw fish experience. Which, for some people, is a plus. I like sushi, I like kimbap, and, uh, okay. Not this time, I guess. But, yeah, I like sushi, I like kimbap, I like both of them. But... I think... Kimbap, the, the benefit of kimbap, at least while you're living in Korea, is that you can safely buy it at a convenience store. Sushi, I think I would never ever buy at a convenience store. And I'm sure you can imagine why, like raw fish from a convenience store, that's like, that's worse than, you know, whatever you can buy from a gas station in America, like gas station burgers, I would avoid. But I'm sure there's gas station sushi in America, I would never eat that. Even from Korea, maybe Japan? Probably not. But convenience store sushi, no, I would avoid that. But convenience store kimbap, perfectly fine because you don't have the raw ingredients from sushi. So that's one advantage there. Oh, okay, I'm about to run out of steps. Okay. I really can't catch a Pokemon by, like, facing the corner. It's like a Taurus gonna, like, jump out at me. Come on. Okay, yeah, ran out. Okay. Alright, well, that'll do for this time. Still don't have a Tauros. This is what I thought that the Safari Zone experience would be for each of those four Pokemon, but I got really lucky with Chansey and Scyther and Kangaskhan, probably just because they appeared so close to the start. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time where I hopefully catch a Tauros and definitely talk more about life in Korea and the good things in Korea and food, probably. But thanks for watching. Have an awesome day and an awesome week, and I will see you next time.